To get us started off with, I'm going to be playing this amazing instrument. Chuck, what? What? Tell us a, about okay. this. This is a Timberline harp guitar, mm -hmm. and it's a co-creation of Rob Smith and Greg Miner. Okay. Greg Miner is, of course, the harp guitar pope, mm -hmm. and I'll talk about him a little bit later. <laughs> and Rob is an amazing, amazing person. He set this up. Uh, these are made in Indonesia, mm -hmm. but the design came from both Rob and Greg. And this is actually a parlor size. It has a scalloped top. Mm -hmm. you, you feel over it if you put your hand on, on the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and is when a harp guitar is big, and you put your arm around it, you your mm -hmm. arm can go to sleep pretty yes, quick. Yes, yes, yes. And so this is a 24-inch scale. This particular guitar has two pickups in it, uh, and they're uh, underneath each each bridge, right. so you can control it independently. Yeah. So, well, let me see. How, yeah, see what it sounds like. So this now, is okay. Forgive me, all of you harp guitarists that may be watching. I'm just a regular guitarist, so I'm going to be trying to learn your instrument. My well, job is to teach him how to play harp guitar <laughs> in one hour. There you go. <laughs> All right, so it's standard tuning for this bottom neck here. It is, but many harp guitarists play in all kind of keys. They, they, they'll play dad gad, they'll play drop D, right. they'll play any number of, of keys, and then you can change your bass strings to match that within reason. Sure. Because it's all based on physics. And these bass strings are just one note. There's no fret that goes along with them. So right. they're tuned. This first one, there's what of it? One, one, two, three, four, five, six of them? Many, most harp guitars have six. Mm -hmm. A few of the older ones had five. Some had four. Mm -hmm. Some of the newer harp guitars, like one of the ones that I make, have seven. Because why not? That's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole, whole octave. There you go. Now, to make a harp guitar, it has to have at least one unfretted string yeah. that rings out. And to be a harp guitarist, you must play one harp <laughs> note on, I, in the song I think for it I, to be a harp guitar. I think song. I can cover the, at least that. So they're tuned D. C, C, B, A, A, G, and then this one can be an E or an F okay. when they're in a six. Now, I've currently got it tuned to an F. Right. There are two tunings, two major tunings in the harp guitar world. Mm -hmm. There is this tuning, mm -hmm. which is the traditional tuning that dates back to the 1700s. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Stephen Bennett tuning. Mm -hmm. who is the new grandfather of the harp guitar. And <laughs> if Steve, you haven't checked out Stephen oh, Bennett's stuff, it is amazing. Go on Stephen Bennett's website. He is absolutely amazing. And he's an even better person than he is a harp guitar player. <laughs> and that's hard to believe. Sure. But he has G's mm -hmm. here and here and then D, C, B, A. And he'll tell you it's because he had he knew nothing about it when his great-grandfather passed away, they all went and they found a harp guitar in the attic mm -hmm. and his great-grandfather had played up in the Yukon in the saloons mm -hmm. and on the radios. And Stephen, as you know, was quite a flat picker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and had already won at Wingfield flat picking. And they said, well, you're the only guitarist in the family. You get the guitar. And the rest is, as they say, history. <laughs> so he'll say, I, I went to the music store and I got some strings and I put it on it and by the time I found out that there were other harp guitar players in the world, I'd already learned a bunch of songs. There you go. All right, so I'm just going to try and play, try and play this monster um, as best as I can. Now, looking at it from a player's perspective, it is quite confusing because there's a lot of strings that you're looking at down this way. I mean, there's what twelve different strings. So, so your your relationship of where your hand is 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 what's troubling me at the moment. But let's see if let's just kind of mess around with it and see if I can make some music with this thing.
I'm watching some of the comments. Randy120, <laughs> you said finally a guitar that Steve, Steve can't master. Well, <laughs> he's only been playing this for about 30 seconds. <laughs> this was this was not rehearsed. <laughs> no, he played this. I literally have not yeah, played this. You're right. <laughs> I have never, ever heard anybody pull that off. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Randy. <laughs> that... Uh, yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, will you demonstrate part of the magic of the harp guitar are the tones that it picks up from the chords? Okay, so so uh, you were showing me this earlier. So there's a lot of overtones that's happening. Basically, these are all notes in a C major scale, a D, C, B, A, G, and F. Okay, so that's all part of the C major scale. So if I play like a C chord over here... You get a lot of ringing, overtones ringing up here. So let me see if we can try this again. So even with all of the upper strings muted, I still get an entire C chord happening through through the, the uh, th I guess it would be this sound hole for that. Right. Thing. And it's still going. Wow, it's like a day in the life by the Beatles. It's like your own built-in reverb. Yeah. And it... It, it's amazing what that does. So even if you don't reach up and play a whole bunch of bass notes, that's driving behind it. Now, something that I learned from Muriel Anderson, and early on on some of her harp guitars, she had, had uh, built a device that she could put her arm down on, mm -hmm. and then eventually she would play and then just use the flesh of her arm to, 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 to mute, mute it. it. So if you wanted it to ring, and then you wanted to, there you go. You just put it right down. Um, let's talk. We have so many, so many things, um, questions that I have. First of all, this is a gorgeous instrument. This is Timberline. Timberline. Timberline guitars. I'm sure one of our wonderful moderators can find that, and and uh, and put up their website there. It is just, it's very light, because they can be unwieldy. They can be really big. Yours is a larger yeah. one. Yeah. This is okay, built so on let's, a, let's look okay. at yours here. This is a dreadnought size. Okay, let me, let me trade with you. And it is a full size. It's a 25 and a half inch scale. And this was built by an amazing man, Charles McCormick. And as far as I know, there are very few dreadnought size harp guitars in the world and a story I shared with you earlier yes. that this is sort of patterned after a pre-war mark right <laughs> actually more than sort of <laughs> <laughs> and, and another thing I'm finding as a player uh, the reach of having to reach your thumb over here it's significant. I mean, this little part feels like a toy compared to with all these things. So the, the reach of your thumb up here is... It, is but you do get used to you it. You do get used to it. it. And the closer you get down toward the bridge, the less the reach. But yeah, I, I have a very small hand and even on this full size of guitar I can reach the whole yeah. thing. So you may have to let go of that chord and come up. Yeah. But a lot of times, like on a D, it's right there. On a C, it's right there. Yeah. A B, an A, a G. Yep. And then, like I said, this, this can be an E or an F. Yeah. You can... I got that whole chord right there. Better than me. You want to play us something? Do you no, have a tune? Not right now. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. I'm hey. just going to mess around. Um... um all right, this is, so we've got this, which is more of a dreadnought size. It, it, they're weighted real funny, real real funny as well. It, they're, they're, they're neck heavy. They're neck heavy, yeah. obviously, obviously, because it's, it's, there's well, twice as much wood on this side. So, so that leads me into my other joke or my other statement. People say, what in the world is that? It's a grown guitar. <laughs> this is the horn. <laughs> All of the other guitars you've seen around people playing... They're adolescent guitars. <laughs> they have not gotten their full horn yet. That's real. Well, there you go. 
There you go. All right, I will let you take this one. Yes, sir. You will take this one back. Well, actually, you go oh. ahead and put that down. Let's talk about some of these other okay. instruments that you, you have brought. Now... Um, a lot of show and tell here. That's a lot of show and tell. We'll get to questions here in, in a second. Um, what is this glorious animal? This is our latest model. I work with a gentleman named Jack Jenkins. And... Uh, I'll let you hold this okay. for a second while we get that cable. Absolutely. Um, Jack, for anybody that goes back a ways, might remember the Otari sound consoles. Mm -hmm. Well, he was the designer, inventor, and uh, early engineer of all of those. <laughs> and if you m must have a a little bit of time and actually make a mistake mm -hmm. and ask Jack something about one of those, <laughs> it may take you three hours in a whiteboard session to explain how the pots worked and how <laughs> everything was interconnected and what, what on, went on. And he, he was telling me one time that they had just delivered a several million dollar console out in California. And of course, they're talking on the telephone mm -hmm. that's attached to the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they can't get this going and they've got people coming in and, and you know, it's a big deal and a big deal. And they canceled a bunch of stuff. And they were like, oh my God, this mm -hmm. is, Jack flew out there, got on an airplane that night, flew all the way out there, walked in, pushed a button, they had padded something. Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> That's well, what it is. That's what it, takes. what it would take. But anyhow, tell anyhow, us about this instrument that you have there. What is this? This is a tele harp. A because, tele harp. Because and and let me go just a little bit. Hold this for a second. It is the little brother of the electric harp guitar, the EHG. Okay. Okay. This this is our premier model that we built everything into. Mm -hmm. So we build these electric harp guitars because we're not smart enough to build acoustic harp guitars. We're, wood, <laughs> we're woodworkers, not Lutherans. But anyway, this is acoustic, electric, and MIDI. And when, now we've, we've made a few of these, mm -hmm. um, probably more so than I need to let on to the IRS. Yeah. And uh, anyway, they're four in Las Vegas being played nightly, one in Disney, three in sound studios in uh, in LA. Wow. But you can do anything with this. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot of people around here said, I don't know about that. That looked like something Mr. Spock would play. Yeah. <laughs> so because of that, and because not everybody needs acoustic, MIDI, Seymour Duncan, Five Ways, anything, we came up with... Okay, I want to look at that one a little bit more too. Okay. We, came up with the teleharp specifically for Nashville. All right, so let's see let's see if I can do anything get this going. Okay, can you hear that all right? It's basically your telly. You know? We we didn't want to we didn't want to make it weird. We wanted it for any any um, country guitarist to pick that up and be able to rock a telly. Yeah. And add the overtones and reach up. And it's especially useful when the bass player is late or just <laughs> doesn't show up. There you go. Let but, me, I forgot to get this one tuned before we got going here. You, let me grab that other tuner. That's all right. I think I got, I got it down here. Okay. That's right. You have it plugged into your... Um, so I've got it running through my system here. Um, for the top six strings, for the bottom six strings, uh, I don't even know my uh, I don't even know where my tuner went. Oh, it's on the top of the McCormick yes, sir. there. We can get that. All right. So let's. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I think we. These are probably going to be in relatively. Yeah. Let's see. What we got here. Now, yeah, you did. You got it both plugged in. That's, that's the F there? Yep.
a little tune here a little bit. And then I'll find my groove. I almost had it. It was really coming. You know what Doc Watson said? He tunes because he cares. There it is. All right, now let's try it again. Something, something, something like that. So uh, apparently it can be used for jazz. <laughs> <laughs> and what I was watching you do is play the different notes of the scale that matched the chords. Wasn't always just the one. No. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you were hitting, depending on what was going on, you might have hit, be hitting the third, you might have been hitting the fourth. Yeah. And it and it worked perfectly so <laughs> well there you go that is an incredible uh incredible credible instrument we had a couple of questions pat uh lindgren is saying why doesn't the top harp have a pickup or does it so where is the pickup it is for it's this right here ah there it is there's the pickup and it looks like there's not any tuning pegs on this but it, there's actually uh, these little uh, uh, wheels there at the end that you can tune and do fine tuning on. Now this this back plate here <laughs> is not. You think it would be something that you could actually fret, but you really can't because it's about it's a, a, about a half an inch. About a half an inch, right, yeah. Right. So it's it's not and really meant to. It's not meant to do that. Yeah. And we've tried. We built them with real necks. We took uh, necks uh, with no frets. And when you do a neck with no frets or frets, people want to push it into the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, also, this is... Um, Carbon fiber? What is it? No, that? this is aluminum. Aluminum? This is uh, T-slot aluminum mm -hmm. that they use to build the sound consoles. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, once you, once you get stuck in one of those uh, things... But this guitar, you can feel it, is not a whole lot heavier than regular Telecaster. No, no. I, I have played less Pauls that have caught, that have weighed more than this guitar. Uh, this is not a heavy guitar, and it's rather balanced mm -hmm. considering all of the weight that is this way. It's it's really pretty balanced. So, and I'm not playing with a with a strap or anything like I probably should. I right. Probably should be. It it really harp guitars. Many people will wear a strap. For me, 
it puts it almost in a classical position. Yeah. And since I have 11 inch long fingers, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it actually puts it in a really good position for me to play. I sit up better. Yeah. I'm not doing that. And one of the things about a harp guitar that all of us do is we tend to look at it. We tend to I know. look I'm, at I'm it. I'm looking for, I'm hanging on for dear life trying to figure out. Well, you, you, you've now been playing for 20 minutes. <laughs> so I've now doubled my doubled, harp guitar you know, playing time. Experience. What a lot of harp guitarists will tell you, and Muriel and mm -hmm. Stephen both said, sit down on the couch, mm -hmm. turn the light up, yeah, and start finding where those notes are, where you and uh, other guitar, you know, yeah, you, you need to do the same thing with your D chords and your C's and wherever you're going. If they wanted to learn, if our folks wanted to learn more about where to get more information about harp guitars, tell us about some of the organizations and websites that are involved. Well, we in that. we have two organizations it used to be one mm -hmm. and then uh and i guess it was harp guitar 18. Now, all right let me go back a little bit in 2003 they had a small harp guitar convention mm -hmm. that was about eight to twelve people then stephen bennett organized stephen it. bennett organized it um they discovered through the magic of the internet, mm -hmm. there were other people in the world that played harp guitar. Mm -hmm. And about six of them came to mm -hmm. Williamsburg, Virginia, one of which was uh, Andy Wahlberg, mm -hmm. not the one on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's act Andy's like six foot seven uh -huh. and had been playing harp guitar in Naples, Florida for 30 years wow. in one place. He's a staple. Mm -hmm. He's got... 15 CDs. People mm -hmm. come from all over the world to see him. Anyhow, it was like, okay, well, we all met. There's six of us. Boom. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the end of it. Well, next year, it's like, why don't we try this again? Mm -hmm. Like 15 people showed up. Yeah. And uh, that was the year that I came. Mm -hmm. I had met Stephen Bennett at a Steve Kaufman camp. Right. And a couple of other people that have been friends since, you know, 2002. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I got the bug. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I was going to make you read that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that once you pick up a harp guitar, you can get what they call, you know, a lot of times you get gas. <laughs> Gear acquisition syndrome yes. or guitar acquisition. Well, you can get H. G-A-S, <laughs> harp guitar acquisition syndrome. So anyway, I met Stephen Bennett and fell in love with the harp guitar. And I I went out and bought a double neck Washburn 12 string, 12 string, six string guitar. Ugh. I took off the all the strings on the 12 string side. Right. Got a dobro nut. Mm -hmm. Went out and bought three packs of different gauges of uh, harp guitar strings, mm -hmm. made my own harp guitar, mm -hmm. showed up at the second convention. Mm -hmm. Greg Miner, who is the harp guitar pope and has written all the history on it, he saw that, you know, I'm not like Mr. Harp Guitar and I'm yeah. like not Mr. Guitar. Mm -hmm. And I played a couple things. He looked at it, looked at the tuning. He goes, he's in. It's a, harp, it's a harp guitar because a harp guitar has to have floating strings. Yeah. So it became a harp guitar. <laughs> and I have been to 10 or 11, 11 of them. They're held in different parts of the country each year. And we've held it ever since 2003. Mm -hmm. And even last year in COVID, we did a virtual harp guitar gathering Good. via Zoom. Mm -hmm which was very interesting because it was a lot like the kindergartners clicking their mic on and clicking their mic off. And yep. so harp guitars playing at different times. Anyhow, we had a moderator did good, yeah. but at the end of every concert we play, and I'll play this song tonight, mm -hmm. The Water is Wide. Maybe mm -hmm. you'll play it with me. Mm -hmm. And everybody, so they start it with a few people on stage and then the people in the audience that play mm -hmm. harp guitar, they come up with their instrument mm -hmm. and we play the water is wide four or five times mm -hmm. with everybody on stage. Yeah. And all that music flows through us all. Yeah. And we we just go away Wonderful. in bliss. Wonderful. So 
Well, I know there's a harp guitar gathering. Right. If they wanted to get, uh, there's a where. Right. What website okay. can they go All to? All right, so there are two websites. Uh, HarpGuitars.net is the big website that will tell you more than anybody ever wants to know about harp guitars. HarpGuitars.net. Net. Okay. okay. And HarpGuitar.com. Okay. And I believe they someone put that in there. That's right, Stephen right, right. Bennett's website. Yeah. And then. Um, there's, of course, Timberline Guitars, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're gonna play Emerald Guitars. Emerald here Guitars, minute. and we're gonna talk about Alistair a little bit mm -hmm. later, and then my site, which needs to be updated. And since I'm a computer guy, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm gonna feel really bad. Mine is HarpGuitar.net, mm -hmm. and that's where we did our first Kickstarter funding for the first twelve of these that we built. Wow. So anyhow, but um, well, and, and if I'm sorry, and if they Google. Harp Guitar Gathering, that's a new website, and they'll find that. And we are going to hold that this year in person, and it's going to be uh, up in Connecticut. Good, good. Well, I know you do all kinds of things, and <laughs> you do photography as well. And you're the official photographer for not only the Harp Guitar uh, conventions, but also the Chet Atkins uh, appreciations, the CAS convention. I, I have been fortunate to, to take my photography skills and meet every guitar player in the world and that's how I met you. <laughs> <laughs> One of many. All right, well let's get let's take a, a break just for a second let you catch your breath. If you want to get some more information about that, um, you can go to harpguitargathering.com. That will get you to the uh, the uh, website for the conference that they have. Speaking of uh, guitar Segway. conferences. <laughs> uh, we have our summer guitar conference coming up at uh, guitargathering2021.com and that is coming up from July 14th through the 17th here in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you're, you're interested in just coming for four days and hanging out and playing guitar with uh, some of the best guitar instructors we can find and good friends from all over the country, check it out, guitargathering2021.com, and that can get you all the information for that. Um, hey, let's give away something. We haven't given away anything in a while, so let's give away something. I've got uh, oh some strings from our good friends over at Slinky. My wonderful wife is going to pick somebody. Carol M. Good, Carol M. Uh, you have just won <coughs> a set of strings from our, our good friends over at Slinky Strings. Carol, send me your information service at guitargathering.com and send me your in, uh, your uh, mailing address, things like that, and we'll get and, that off and, too. And Miss Carol, ask about the back of this dreadnought. Oh, yes. Because, you know, this is the guitar that was built by Charles McCormick. Here in Nashville. Here in Nashville. And, I don't know, maybe it's the time... Do a little quick story on Mr. McCormick. Yes, tell, tell him that's right. about this amazing man. Uh, Mr. McCormick was my uh, Sunday school teacher when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that being 13 is just a magical year. <laughs> you know everything, and you don't want to come to Sunday school anymore. Yeah. And I had this Sunday school teacher that actually I wanted to come mm -hmm. to Sunday school. And um, so many, many years later... Uh, I'd come back from a harp guitar gathering, mm -hmm. and always my mother always brought my CDs back from my mother because we'd all buy CDs and mm -hmm. shirts and this mm -hmm. and that. So the normal place you go and have dinner with your mother is either Piccadilly or Shoney's. <laughs> so she she decided that it was Shoney's. So we're there, we're eating, and she waves, and Mr. McCormick and his wife were sitting. Shirley were sitting over there. Well, they had been fast friends with my parents. All these years. Mm -hmm. Mr. McCormick, my dad met when they were at Genesco, mm -hmm. and he was a tool and die maker. My dad was a tool and die maker. And so I can remember going over to his house, and he was making electric guitars, and they were smoking cigarettes mm -hmm. and drinking white lightning and <laughs> making electric guitars. There you go. So anyway, I sat down, and I had a logo from the harp guitar gathering, because you always buy a shirt. And he sat there, and he... Looked today and said, I, you know, I've been around guitars all my life. I've never seen anything like that. So I went on to describe a heart uh -huh. guitar that it had the strings and this and that. He said, that's pretty interesting. But, you know, I used to build a few guitars, but I've had two strokes. 
I can't use my left hand, can't see out of my left eye, and as you can tell, I'm stuttering a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, but I sure would like to hear one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, I'll come over sometime. About a week went by, and I'd given him my phone number, and he called me up, and he said, Chucky, mm -hmm. thought you were going to bring one of those guitars over here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, actually, I'm, I'm putting one in the car right now. I'm on the way over. So I went over, and I played. I played a little bit, and I had a lark in the morning, which is which is a pretty you know, nice beginner guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, did some Christmas stuff on it, and he thought for a second, and then he went and brought a guitar he had made, and we looked at that, and then he just sits up and he goes. I'm going to make me one of those. Uh -huh. And next thing he's hollering for his wife to bring him a piece of paper and a, and something to measure with. Uh -huh. Of course, first thing he said, she said, get it yourself, I'm busy. But anyhow, she brought him a piece of paper and a cloth tape and was telling me where to measure. And um, so we were, he was writing down these things and, I said, well, I can leave this guitar. I've got some other guitars. And he goes, anybody can copy a guitar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build a guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, okay. You've had two strokes. You can't see out of one eye, and you can't use your left arm. And you're going to build a harp guitar, and there are probably not 15 people in the world that can build one. Mm -hmm. Well, about seven months later, I get a call, and he wants me to come over and see something. I come over, and he has built a harp guitar and wants to know how to string it. <laughs> so I string it and uh, it's actually pretty doggone good. Yeah. In between that time, he had gone to his doctor because he had cut off part of his finger, mm -hmm. long, a finger on his left hand. And the doctor said, Charles, it's time for you to give up the shop. Mm -hmm. He said, how long have you been my doctor? He said, about 40 years. He says. Well, you know, I think it's time for me to get a new doctor. <laughs> so he got a new doctor. New doctor cleaned out his carotid arteries. Mm -hmm. He got his cataracts done. The arteries gave him back a lot of his movement. Mm -hmm. The doctor says, hey, if the shop keeps you alive, put yellow tape all over everything and uh, go on. Yeah. So yeah. he built another, he built a, uh, a guitar for that first one went to one son, second one went to the another son, and this is the third harp guitar he built, and he gave this to me. Wow! So, it um, the finish is hand rubbed, yeah. but as you can tell, there's some major work. That, that's serious stuff. I mean, stuff this there. is some serious stuff. But the big thing is, is the sound. Now, any guitar can be mic'd. But this, I mean, any guitar can have a pickup. Mm -hmm. That's a big sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Muriel Anderson, years later, discovered him through me, mm -hmm. got him on Tennessee Crossroads. Right. Where he talked about the journey, and I'm, I'm the young man that he had knew, known all his life that had, had the T-shirt on. <laughs> and uh, he now has built over 30 harp guitars. Wow. About 15 of them he said I sold, mm -hmm. and about 15 of them I gave away. Yeah. So, wow. That, that's, that's, he's just an amazing guy. Wow. Well, all right, let's see if, we, if you have a question about these um, instruments, and uh, we will try and answer them as best as we can uh, with, with all of this. Um, uh, Randy is saying, I noticed the sound hole is offset. Does that affect the tone of the guitar for the harp uh, strings up there? No. It, some, some sound does come out of here. Mm -hmm. it, and mostly it comes out of the whole body. It's largely ornamental. Um, now this is, this is a guitar that's made by Emerald Guitars in Ireland. And uh, uh, it looks black. It's actually a really gorgeous uh, uh, brown and teal, but it kind of comes off looking a little dark on, on camera. But I, it's very light. I love it because it's just so light. It's carbon fiber, and uh, I love it for two reasons. I've flown with it several times, mm -hmm. and it goes in the overhead. 
There you go. And also, it um, it's impervious to a point of heat and cold and this and that. Yeah. And so, you know, one doesn't put their wooden guitars in their car during the summer. Right. But you can grab that and you take it to the beach and you can go any place with it. Yeah. And um, there are times when I have a few guitars kind of like you. Mm -hmm. So I may not play every guitar every day. Mm -hmm. I, I may not pick that up for a couple weeks. It's always in perfect tune yeah. because it's carbon fiber. Yeah. But yeah. Alistair made these and he is, he is amazing. And uh, so Emerald Guitars has, has been around for, well, I, I know at least as long as back yeah. to the 2000s. Yeah. And he just recently, and I don't know if it was 10, his 10,000 guitar I think that yeah. was. That's a lot. That's a lot of carbon fiber. Yes. If you want to really hear something incredible, uh, go into YouTube and type in Emerald Guitars and Ian Ethan Case. Oh yes. Ian Ethan Case did a demo. Our good friend Ian Ethan Case did a demo of Emerald Guitars. That is just one of the most amazing things I've ever heard. So uh, what a musician! We need to have him back on the show. Um, and what amazing instruments so this is an this is an emerald guitar and so i'm going to try and play this if we can get the mic happening here and um and let's see if i can make anything happen with this <laughs> was amazing <clears throat> but there was something else going on that they may not have picked up on there was an ice cream truck <laughs> that, that came by here <laughs> and you, you guys know that Steve has some hearing <laughs> he heard that and it didn't phase him <laughs> and hopefully y'all didn't hear that but they were playing a melody and I'm just thinking what what a musician that can have all, <laughs> someone that has big ears, and those are not physically big ears. Yeah. That's what we call in Nashville yeah. the ability 
to hear and play anything. Someone that is hearing that in their peripheral yeah. and then playing something on a harp guitar at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like, this is a really cool one. William Nelson is asking, what setup is needed for the harp portion of the, the guitar? Well, it's pretty high off here. Again, this is not quite it, a half it, an inch, but it it's is. It's really no setup. Uh, it um, you you want it off the off the. There's no setup needed because it doesn't touch anything. No, it's not it's not touching a fret. Uh -uh. So you've got a, you've got basically a standard bridge, sort of a concept down right. here. Right. Uh, the the saddle is a little bit taller. Just to it's accommodate. a little it's a little bit taller, and that's to accommodate reaching up and 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 you got to think the, the, uh, the smaller strings when they vibrate vibrate in a smaller range larger strings when they vibrate they just kind of need more space mm -hmm. to vibrate so if you had these large strings on this they would be constantly buzzing because they're hitting the hitting the frets and stuff so uh, the larger the strings you are the more they need to come up a little bit just to give them right. space to to do what they need to do and it's really interesting to see these photographed or video and because they can do that yeah that that dance yeah depending on you know what uh, what speed you're photographing them at yeah um, Brian for Fitzpatrick is saying what's the bracing like in the upper heart part or is it hollow is there any bracing oh yeah up there there there's bracing just depends on you're putting a large piece of wood you're gonna have to and oh, well then I'm gonna have to tell it tell something. Uh, one of our Connecticut trips, we all took our harp guitars up. Some of us had old ones, Lark in the Mornings, and this and that. This was pre Timberline, mm -hmm. and they snuck in at night because the guy that hosted was a professor up there, mm -hmm. and they ran all the harp guitars through an MRI machine mm -hmm. and found out where all the bracing were and the Dyers, mm -hmm. and the Gibsons, and the new ones, and this and that. And Greg Miner, who is the harp guitar pope, mm -hmm. and worked at an aerospace company for, he just retired this year, mm -hmm. documented all of that. Yeah. And then that's how the Timberline was born. Now, these these instruments have been around a long time. I mean, there's... there's 100 years. Oh, yeah, they've been around for 100 years. Uh, there's, you know, Gibson made some, some harp guitars I saw. It was kind of from the 1903, I think I saw yeah. one of them. H Harmony, well, 1730-something, uh, Harmony made them, Gibson made them. A lot of companies, uh, you know, made those. And they were, they were, in fact, back in the early, uh, in the 1800s, there were harp guitar orchestras. There'd be families that had four harp guitars in them. Uh, for uh, Women's Month, mm -hmm. Greg found photos of women orchestras playing harp guitars. Wow. And that's just pretty amazing. It's just, it, it's not an instrument that you, you see as much uh, these days, but it is- It's a, coming back. It's coming back. It's a very beautiful instrument, and I think if I had a little bit of time to, 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 uh, to get to know it, I think I could start playing it a little bit more like a harp guitar and less like a guitar with some extra strings, which is kind of, kind of how I'm appropriate, uh, 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 well, appropriating it now. But Maybe we should ask the Brain Trust, because what I typically do, and, oh, I, you didn't ask me what my, what my name is in the harp guitar. Uh, <laughs> in, you know, I was going to be, you know, uh, Maurice or the Master of Love or something. That was already taken. <laughs> but... I am the harp guitar matchmaker. Harp guitar matchmaker. Because not every, there is no one harp guitar that's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, take all the other ones and throw them away. Yeah. You know, only, only do a tone devil. Only do, yeah. because each person has, just, you know, just like you like certain guitars. Yeah. So I will take, obviously I have a lot of harp guitars, I'll bring them over sometime. And I'll let them do a sleepover for a week. Okay. <laughs> Good. I think mean, I could figure out how to play it. Well, so let me ask. Uh, somebody type in, which harp guitar do you think needs to stay at Steve's for a sleepover? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. While you're doing that, since we're on the home yep. stretch here, uh, I want to give away one more thing. Hey, let's give away one of my CDs. 
Um, I did a CD way back when, kind of more, uh, kind of a jazzy instrumentals of uh, hymns and things like that. So the winner of this is Don Bachmeyer. Don Bachmeyer, uh, send me your information at um, uh, service at Guitar Gathering, and we will send this out to you today. You know, the internet is an amazing place. I was watching... Uh, today on Facebook, I was watching Tuck Andrus, the amazing Tuck oh. Andrus from Tuck and Patty. You, you, uh, no, I, I have followed him forever and ever and ever. He was he he was doing. He's the, still great. He's oh wonderful. oh he's amazing. One of the most amazing fingerstyle guitarists I've ever heard. If you want to know how to accompany a singer in a way, just type in Tuck and Patty and listen to Tuck Andrus play. Anyway, he was doing a Facebook Live today. I just happened to come across it. Tuck Andrus is live. All right, so I tuned it in, and he was talking, doing some amazing things about chord movement and and intervals and and uh, moving bass lines and things like that. And I just typed in a question there. Next thing you know, okay, Steve in Nashville is saying, and I'm like, uh, oh wow, man. I'm yeah. just sitting here doing my doing some work, and here I'm interacting and getting some some uh, interaction with Tuck Andrus, one of the greatest fingerstyle guitarists on the planet, who I did invite to our fall fingerstyle guitar retreat. I'm just saying. So maybe yes, we can get yeah. that maybe we can get that worked out. Um, there you go. Okay, enough of all that stuff. I wanted to um, 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 thank thank you Chuck for coming and for taking a moment to do that. Do you do you want to play that song? Let's play that song. What, can we do the water is wide? Yes. If you if you what key are you doing in it D. In? D. All right. Let's get it. Okay, you just Get it started and I'll try to figure it out what you're doing. at eight o'clock there you go <laughs> hey uh keep up the great work in your own learning no guitar workout this week um so but we will see you again next week where we'll be i'll be covering some great stuff we're gonna be talking about diminished chords and augmented chords and how to use them in songs and uh, a lot of folks don't know kind of where to use them what good is a diminished chord really and so we're going to discover all the wonderful things you can do about that got a great month of, of uh, lessons coming up for you in june we're going to talk about accompanying a singer as well and i'll give you some tips for uh, all of that as well so stay tuned with us next week we had a great couple of weeks of lessons so go back on our youtube guitar channel and check out all these free lessons that we have for you the past month has been a great time if you haven't if you like the content that we're putting out take a second to subscribe uh, we do appreciate any sort of donation that you could give so we do have a super chat going and also our paypal links below so if you're interested in supporting the work that we do um, feel free to do that it is always appreciated thank you chuck for being part of this thank i you. look forward to the next time that we can get together and make music together and uh, and uh do photography and all the amazing things that you do. Thank you for your just a giving heart with the sharing all of this stuff. Um, all right. There you go. Hey, keep up the great work and your learning. We will see you guys next time.